visitors or guests to acknowledge this morning? Okay, seeing none. A handful of announcements and opportunities for the coming weeks. Our children have been rehearsing for the upcoming Christmas musical, and it's not too late for your child to be a part of it. Rehearsals for grades two and up are at nine o'clock on Sunday mornings and from 6.45 to 7.15 on Wednesdays. And the pre-K and first grade rehearsals at 9.30 on Sunday morning. So again, if your child wants to take part in the Christmas musical that's coming up, um, nine o'clock or 9.30 on Sunday mornings, just based on their grade level. Um, Lanny Meese had an announcement this morning. Oh, your child, Doug. <laughs> Good morning. I wanted to give you a quick update on the Howland Tiger Food Backpack Mission Project. As you know, we are in our fourth year and we serve grades kindergarten through fifth in all four of the Howland Elementary Schools. We started with 50 students and a small stipend given graciously by our church. And today we have 210 students and each week the number climbs by four or five. We feel so blessed to have the support of HUM Church who makes this entire project possible. And we thank you so much. We have great support from within and out of our church who help us weekly pack and distribute our food. We also get wonderful help from VBS, preschool, and other groups in the church. What we also have seen in the community is that they have gotten involved. This week, we went to the Holland High School and picked up a few things that were given to us from the Interact Group, which is sponsored by the Rotary, the Holland Rotary Club, <clears throat> from their Stuff the Bus. They actually this year filled two full school buses. And they collect food for Second Harvest, Bowlingdale, and Howland Community um, food pantries. And this year, they really emphasized the backpack program and keeping the food right here in Holland. We were totally amazed when we showed up in our SUV, and it was completely filled. We couldn't get another thing in. And the... Um, the advisor's car was completely filled, and one of the students has a Suburban that was totally filled. The picture that was just that brand, and can you throw that back up? Thank you. Those are, that's what we picked up. So those tables that are there in Fellowship Hall, there was not another space anywhere. And... Um, <clears throat> That, that, that's quite a lot of food, and, and I just think that it's just awesome that not only the church, but the community is involved. But all of that food, just to keep it in perspective, all that stuff you see there will only feed children for about three to three and a half weeks. And so it is just really great that other people are coming in here to help us. So we still reach out and fully accept any person or group that wants to help us feed hungry children in any way, and we thank you again. No child should go hungry. Good morning. I'm sorry that this was not in the bulletin or you were not advised. The Finance Committee will meet Monday at 7 o'clock probably in the library. But this will be an important meeting because we need to review and approve the budget for 2018. Um, so I'll make every effort, Finance Committee. I'll look around, see who I don't see, and I'll call you. But uh, please be there Monday, 7 o'clock. Thanks. Our annual church conference is this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at the Western Reserve United Methodist Church in Canfield, and that's open for all to attend. So again, that's Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock in Canfield at the Western Reserve United Methodist Church. Our Relay for Life team will meet next Sunday after the worship service. Tammy, is that correct? It's not this Sunday. Next Sunday? Is Tammy here? Anyone from Relay? Is that correct? Okay. Uh, relay team will meet next Sunday after the worship service. Any other announcements this morning? Flowers on the altar this morning are given by Chuck May in loving memory of Bobby May. 
Let's take time to greet one another. Friends, this morning our theme in worship is going to be about worrying and what it means to wait upon the Lord for strength when we worry. And so our opening song is going to be one that talks about how we wait upon the Lord for strength. And I invite you to join together. Please lift your voices as we sing with Firmly Grounded. You're the defender 
pray with me, please? Lord God, we just give you thanks and praise that we can gather in this place to worship you today. And we give you thanks that you are an everlasting God. And you give us strength and you give us hope. You lift us up, Lord. You comfort those in need. You are all those things that we have just sung about and so much more. So we give you thanks, Lord, and we ask as we gather in this place that there's anyone who needs the comfort of your Holy Spirit, if there's anyone who needs to feel your strength right now in their lives, that, Lord, they'd open up their hearts this morning and feel you in this place. And, Lord, may all of us do that. Feel you in this place and allow you to fill us this morning, that you might pour forth from us into this world when we leave this place. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Children, come and join for the children's time, please. Okay, wait for her to get up here. All right, so real quickly, I want to make sure everybody knows this. We'd love to have everybody in the Christmas musical. If you haven't been coming, we've got practices at 9 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings, depending on what age you are. If you don't know for sure, check with one of the adults, because we'd love to have you involved. Those are lots of fun. Okay, you got to be more enthusiastic than adults. You ready? Good morning. Good. What I have with me up here this morning is a camera that I borrowed from a friend this morning because my camera is on my phone. How many of you have a camera on your phone or know your parents have a camera on your phone if you don't have a phone yet, right? So you see people take pictures on their phones all the time, but people still have cameras too, separate cameras sometimes. And what we do with this is, of course, I 
focus, what does focus mean? Anyone know what focus means? Tell me what focus means. That means be touching. It means what? Um, uh, be touching. Be touched? To, yep. to pay attention. Yep. Exactly. When your teacher says focus, <laughs> they mean pay attention. Exactly right, okay? So, if I want to pay attention to something, I focus upon it, okay? So, if I want to focus on Cole right now and pay attention to Cole, I will turn my camera over to Cole and I can focus on Cole, okay? If I wanted to do that, okay? And if I want to turn my attention and focus on somebody else and pay attention someplace else, I could turn and pay attention over to somebody else and focus on them, right? And if I want to focus on Addy, I can do that. And then if I want to go and I want to focus on Teresa, I can bring it back here and I can focus my camera on Teresa because now I'm paying attention, because now I'm paying attention, right? I'm focusing on somebody else, okay? And then I can take their picture and I can turn my focus back and I can focus on someone else and I can pay attention to them and take their picture, okay? So focusing is what, you're right, buddy, what I'm paying attention to, what I'm paying attention on, okay? So if I want to focus on something else, if I want to focus on the piano, I could take the piano's picture because I'm focusing on the piano with my camera, okay? If I want to focus on something, right now there's cameras focused. Look up here on the screen. Oh, my gosh. There's cameras focused down on you guys right now. Okay, and you guys are on the screen, and you're actually going out on the internet this morning. You can watch yourself later in the service. There's cameras focused down on you right now, okay? If they were focused someplace else in the room, they wouldn't be, like you said, buddy, paying attention to you. They'd be paying attention to something else. But right now, they're paying attention up here. They're focused up here. So what we want to do... Great. So what we want to do, guys, is pay attention to our teachers when we're in school, pay attention to our parents and the rules when we're at home, and we want to pay attention to God. Now, do you think that we should only pay attention or focus on God when we're in church? Do you think that's the only time we should focus on God or pay attention to God? When else might we pay attention to God or focus on God? When something bad happens in life or when something really good happens in life. You know what? We can really focus any time on God. Because God made everything. God is everywhere. God's all around us. God's in our hearts. So we can focus on God at all times, okay? It's hard to think of it that way because we think, well, I'm not in church. I'm not going to focus on God right now. I'm not going to pay attention to God right now. But really, we can focus on God and pay attention to God at all times because God is always with us. Tomorrow morning when you wake up and are eating breakfast, is God with you? God is. Tonight, when you go to bed and, you, and you're going to go to sleep, is God with you? Hello. God is, right? God is always with us. What? Okay? It's not a trick question, Dominic. God is always with us. The answer to that question is always yes. Is God with you then? Is God with you tomorrow? Is God with you the next day? The next day, no matter where you are, the answer is yes. So we don't just focus on God when we're at church. But we have to remember God is always with us and God always deserves our focus and attention, so we can try to be the people that God wants us to be, okay? All right, let's say a prayer together, everybody. Let's take a minute and pray together. Dear God, please help us to focus on you, not just on Sunday morning when we're here to worship you and learn more about you in Children's Church, but at all times to remember you're with us when we're going to bed, when we're waking up, when we're living every day. You are always there with us, and we can always remember to spend a little time focused on you because you are always focused on us and loving us. And we thank you, God. You watch over us every day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. You can go back to Children's Church. bring our prayers to God this morning with our joyous concerns. If you have a joy or concern you wish to share, please raise your hand and Usher will bring you a microphone.
Sherry Dillon asked for prayers for her mom, Nancy Shaw, who recently had a pacemaker put in, prayers of recovery for Nancy. Please keep Bob McCall in your prayers as he recovers from broken bones in his foot. Sally Allen asked for prayers for her sister, Pat, who will be undergoing surgery this coming Wednesday. Any other joys, concerns to share this morning? Okay. I'm seeing none. We'll sing our prayer hymn this morning, Be Still My Soul. Let's bow our heads and pray silently together.
Lord God, what a wonderful thing it is to be in your presence. We have gathered here, and because we've gathered here, you said you'd be here also. And so we are so thankful, so thankful, Lord, that you love us so much that you would come into our midst. And you said you wanted to be with us. You made it clear that you would be our God and we would be your people. So in this season of Thanksgiving, our hearts overflow with gratefulness for blessings, for love, for goodness, for gifts of the Spirit, for the wonderful joy that comes to our life, for the worry that you help us remove from our lives so that it disappears because we trust in you. Lord God, what a blessing. What a blessing it is to be one of your children. What a blessing. So Lord, continue to fill us this day. Continue to bless these people. Continue to bless this church. Lord, you know there's enough needs in the world out there, and we ask you to be in the midst of all of those. Tragedies every week. Innocence. Broken. Little children. Life's taken. We don't take our children for granted, Lord. They're precious. We pray for each one. As they went out today, we pray for each one. And throughout the week, we pray for each one. We're thankful, thankful for our children. Thankful for families, Lord, who love you and gather together. Not only here, but around a table to eat and to pray, to say bedtime prayers. Lord, what thankfulness we have. You said you would hear and you would answer. Today we're also here, Lord, thinking about uh, all the folks in our life, friends, family members that are struggling, whether needing surgeries or heart problems or cancer problems or, Lord, whatever else is going on in their life. And, Lord, we ask you to touch them. We ask you to be with each member who silently bowed their head and prayed for somebody who was very important to their life, a family, friend, an acquaintance, a co-worker. We ask you to hear those prayers, and we ask you to touch and anoint and to fill and to bless and to keep, wash over them. We know, Lord, that you will answer in your time and in your way, and we, we just turn that over to you, Lord, and, and we let you have it because there's nothing else we can do, but, Lord, you're thankful. You're thankful because you tell us, you tell us that prayer makes a huge difference. The prayer of the righteous makes a wonderful difference. So, Lord, we're thankful to be in this house. We're thankful for the pastor we have. We thank you for his family. We ask you to watch over them. We thank you for Sunday school teachers, and we, we thank you, Lord, for those who, who meet and do finances, and we thank you, Lord for a building that we can come into. And we thank you, Lord, for new ideas. And we thank you for the things to come. We haven't seen them yet, but they're coming because your blessings are going to overflow upon us. So we thank you. We celebrate. And we thank you and thank you and thank you. And Lord, we pray that prayer you taught us to pray when we didn't know how to pray. You said pray like this. Our Father. We will gather our gifts and tithes and offerings, and what a blessing. We can give because God provides for us. So as the ushers go forward, let's thank you, Lord, for what you give and how we use it.
Dear God, we believe that you were speaking to us when you spoke privately to your disciples. You cautioned us not to be led astray and to remain united in faith and love and respect for one another. We humbly place before you these tithes and offerings, and we pray for guidance as we strive to do your will and follow your path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you, if you would, please, to take a moment to pray with me and for me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, part of preaching is trying to know what kind of thoughts go through people's heads in everyday life because you try to preach messages which you hope 
will deal with problems or concerns that people actually are dealing with. And that's why I often deal, use illustrations from my own life, you know, about my own kids or family or concerns that I deal with because I figure that if I struggle in certain areas, it means other people probably do as well. And that's why every few years I come back to this topic of worrying because worrying is something that I deal with sometimes and I figure that if I do, others might also. You heard me trying to explain to the kids this morning how a camera works and Bob was telling me everything is automatic focus anymore on cameras. You know, when you point your camera anymore, things focus automatically, but it's still about what you're turning your camera to, what you're turning your attention to, what you are focusing upon. And this morning's scripture where Jesus talks about worrying, he's actually, to me, talking about changing our focus. I'm going to have the guys pull that up for you now this morning. It's from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, words probably most of you have heard before. Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Sounds simple, right? He just says, hey, I tell you, do not worry. Is, it not, is not your life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Now look how Jesus kind of changes the focus. He says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? He says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life. And why do you worry about clothes? And then he changes our focus again, something around creation that we can see. He says, see how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, well, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. And then Jesus tries to turn our focus again, not just to things that we need, but the things that the world needs that we should be striving for. And he says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen to that, huh? And then finally, I'm going to show you one other scripture from Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 through 31, where Jesus says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? In other words, he's saying at this time in which they lived, and sparrows were not of much value at all, two of them sold for a penny. Yet not one of them, not one sparrow, will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very head, hairs of your head are all numbered, which means more to many of you than it does to me. But <laughs> you get the idea. He knows everything about us, even the number of hairs on our head. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. He sees us. He knows everything about us. He loves us much more, provides for the birds, the lilies, for all those things. It's scripture that changes our focus. See, worrying is really about how we spend our time when we face a problem. If you have lost a job, of course, we focus on finding a new one. That becomes our focus. It should be. If a loved one is facing an illness, of course, we focus on getting them the po best possible care. Of course, when we have problems, we focus on solving them. But that's not the part that keeps us up at night, right? It's not about how we're going to solve the problems. It's about what fear we have. It's that we might not find that job, that our loved one might not recover, that we might not solve the problem. What keeps us up is the worry the doubt, the uncertainty, the fear. Worrying is about what we do while we wait for a problem to be resolved, for that loved one to find a job or to be healed. Worrying is when we allow our thoughts, which means our hearts and our minds, 
to be focused on the uncertainty, on the doubt, and the fear. And that's why when we worry, we need to change our focus. It's just a simple truth that many people today rarely read their Bibles anymore. Not even at times when we really struggle sometimes in life. And it's too bad because one of the best ways we have to change our focus, to deal with the uncertainty and doubt and fear, is to read scriptures. And there are so many that remind us that no matter what we face in life, God is in control. He's got the whole world in his hands. And we can try to solve our problems, and we should. But when we read God's word, we change our focus. We remind ourselves that there's an omnipotent, loving God watching over us. And it says over and over again in God's word, hey, look all around you. Look at the birds. Look at the flowers. Look at all of creation. Can't you see that God made it all? God is in control of it all. God loves you more than flowers or birds. Certainly if God cares for them, God is going to care for you. So worrying is almost about how we choose to spend our time, what we choose to focus on when we face hard times. I mean, let's be honest, waiting is hard because sometimes our struggles are long. The ordeals we face seem to go on and on, and it is human nature to have doubts, uncertainty, fear, to worry when we are waiting for problems to be resolved. And the greater the problem is, the more we worry, the greater our fears and doubts. That's human nature. That's why the first song that we sang together this morning was Strength Will Rise As We Wait Upon the Lord. It's a song that was on Christian radio about three or four years ago, became very popular, Everlasting God. You're an everlasting God. You don't change. You comfort those in need. You give us strength. You lift us up on wings like eagles when we wait upon the Lord. When we wait, when we wait upon the Lord, we pray, we read our Bibles, we look around creation, we see God's hand at work, we change our focus from our doubts and fears to seeing how God has it in, under control. We don't just wait aimlessly. That's not what it means to wait upon the Lord. When we wait aimlessly, doubt and fear and uncertainty, those things rise up within us. But when we wait upon the Lord, when we choose our focus, change our focus, and focus on God and his love, we find strength. If you saw the acronyms this morning in the bulletin, I've been trying to invite invent acronyms for people to see. And I did one for worry that stands for worry only really robs you of joy, of peace, of the strength that we could have from waiting upon the Lord instead. But instead, we can wait upon the Lord. And if you see in your bulletin this morning for wait, I put that that stands for we appreciate in time. Wait. Many times in my life, I have worried. And only much later, once time has gone by, to give me a new perspective how I understood how God was at work at that time. I'll tell you a story about the only survivor of a shipwreck who washed up on a small uninhabited island. And he prayed fervently for God to rescue him. And every day he scanned the horizon for help, but none seemed forthcoming. Exhausted, he eventually managed to build a little hut out of driftwood to protect him from the elements and to store his few possessions. But then one day, after scavenging for food, he arrived home to find his little hut in flames, the smoke rolling up to the sky. The worst possible thing that he happened, he had happened did happen. He had so little, and now it was all lost in flames. He was stung with grief and anger, and he cried out, God, how could you do this to me? Wasn't it bad enough? How could you let this happen to me? Early the next day, however, he was awakened by the sound of a ship that was approaching the island. It had come to rescue him. How did you know I was here? He asked his rescuers. They replied, we saw your smoke signal. 
we saw your smoke signal. Friends, in the story, the man realizes the very next day how God was at work. Something that was so horrible, it was, it was already bad enough, and then something so horrible happened, and it turned out to be something that God was using to save him. Now, that's not as simple. That's when I say wait upon the Lord, it's not just that easy, right? It doesn't mean the next day we're going to understand, we're going to be rescued, we're going to be saved. Things take time. It's just a story. But it illustrates something very clearly that is true. Waiting takes time and patience and faith, but the story illustrates that God can take what we can only imagine as terrible things that happen to us and somehow change them into something good. And also that we may not fully understand now, but as time goes by, we appreciate. We understand how God was at work. I'd like to close with one more story. It's another story about fire. A family was awakened by their smoke detector in the middle of the night to discover that their house was on fire. The father ran into the upstairs bedroom of his children and carried his 18-month-old baby in his arms while dragging his four-year-old son by the hand. They were halfway down the stairs when the little boy remembered that he had left his teddy bear in the bedroom. So he broke free from his father's hand and ran back to the bedroom to retrieve it. In the confusion, the father didn't notice his son wasn't with him until he got outside. By now, the little boy was trapped by the flames and smoke in his second-story bedroom. Smoke swirled around him, and he coughed and cried out from the upstairs window, Daddy, Daddy, help me. His father yelled out from below, Jump out of the window. I will catch you. In the darkness and smoke, the little boy yelled back, But Daddy, I can't see you. And his father yelled back, That's okay, son. I can see you. Friends, you know what worrying is? Worrying is the fire and smoke all around us. It blinds us. It confuses us. It can choke us like smoke. It scares us. And at times it feels like maybe the flames are about to overwhelm us. And in those moments, we can't see God. All we see is the fire, the smoke, the doubt, the uncertainty, the fear. We can't see that God is there. We could see God if we could change our focus, if we would turn our eyes away from the doubts and problems and fears to God's word. And God promises we can see God. But we have all had times in our lives when our problems are so overwhelming. It's like a fire, like smoke. And all we can see are the smoke and fire and flames all around us. And that's why it's important to remember that even in those times, like the father calling out to his son to jump, that even at times when we can't see God, God can see us. And God will never let us fall. Even when life is so overwhelming and we can't see God, God never loses God's focus. God can see us. God loves us. And God will never let us fall, but always be there to catch us. As human beings, we need to learn to change our focus when we worry. Not that we don't try to solve the problems that we have. Of course we do. We go to see the doctor. We apply for other jobs. We lift up people and encourage them and strengthen them. We try to do all those things. But when worry and fear and doubt overwhelm us like smoke and flames, we have to change our focus to see, hey, look at the birds. Look at the lilies. Look at the mountains, at the oceans, at all that God has made. In all of creation, God made us in his image. God loved us enough to send Jesus to this earth. God loved us that much. God never loses God's focus. God always watches us. God 
will always catch us when we need him to. That is something to believe. It's something to cherish. And it's something to share with others. If his eye is on a sparrow, surely God is watching us. If God loves sparrows, surely God loves us. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubt and fear, though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, Whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him from care.
I invite you to please stand and receive the benediction if you're able. Friends, we've all had times, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you're going through it now, maybe you're not, maybe a loved one is, but we've all had times when the problems have been so bad, the smoke, the fire around us, so overwhelming, we can't see our Heavenly Father waiting to catch us. We can't see God, but He is there. We need to change our focus and see that God is there and trust in God's promises and know that if God's eye is on a sparrow, God can see us even when we can't see him like the boy and the fire in that story. Our Father, our Heavenly Father, can see us and is always there to catch us. If his eye is on a sparrow, his eye is on us. Let us trust it and believe it when we worry. When others worry, let us remind them of that truth and let us try to bring comfort and strength to others and have it for ourselves as we leave this place and do so with your lives. May the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forevermore. Amen.